All right, welcome back to another edition of our More Visibility End Table discussion. To my right, from originally from Boston, Massachusetts, fighting out of the blue corner, is Christy Nazaro, our Director of Optimized Services, and out of the red corner from Chicago, Illinois, Mr. Theo Bennett. Um, today, or this week, big news about Twitter being something that uh, the United States State Department has asked not to do their routine maintenance that they do. Uh, now, the State Department asking for that to happen, if that's not an indication of Twitter or social media being some very big, viable form of communication out there, I don't know what is. Yeah, good point, Joe. And for those of you that, that didn't catch that, CNET reported that the State Department asked Twitter not to do routine maintenance so they could follow what was happening with some uprisings in Tehran. Um, very interesting, and I think as you said, a complete validation of social media, Twitter. Um, they also had CNN reporting directly from Facebook and Twitter, uh, monitoring tweets that were supposedly coming out of Tehran. So um, for the businesses maybe that are holdouts and don't think this is something that's real, it is. Well, and I think there's already been political confirmation even before this most recent event that Twitter is a force that is in real time really changing the way that people communicate, given how during the State of the Union or the initial inaugural addresses there were um, a variety of politicians who were tweeting about what was happening. So I think that yeah, they were right people, there with their phones. They were right there with their mobile devices and PDAs. And actually, today I was talking a little bit about how you know everybody about a year ago was really concerned about having a mobile site and a dot mobi site and all of this. But I was saying to somebody else internally, you know, why do you need a mobile site if everybody's already on Twitter or everybody's already using certain social um, channels like Facebook? Why can't you just really pump up and build your presence there and use that as your mobile lens to the world? I mean, that's where everybody's searching and looking for information and communicating anyway. So I, I don't know. What do you think about that? I, I think that's a great point. I, mean, I know I talk to clients all the time about honoring channel preference. Mm -hmm. Be where people want you to be. And um, if people want to call you, make sure your phone number is available. If they want to email you, make sure your email is there. And that's right. another great example. People want to use Twitter or Facebook or whatever it might be, wherever your customers are, you should, you should have a voice and, and, there was, and a presence. There was a little story that Danielle was actually talking about from the WOMA conference she went to, Word of Mouth Marketing Conference, where they were saying, you know, using the analogy of a party. If everybody's already at a party and they're having a great time, why are you setting up a party at your house and trying to get everybody to leave the party they're in to come to your house? If they're somewhere else, go where they are and join the party, join the conversation there. And I think social media is kind of the, the epitome of that at this point. People are already at the party. They're already in a community in Ning. They're already speaking about topics in Twitter. So join them there and, and become a presence within that conversation. Just like a party, I'm the last one to get invited or to arrive. <laughs> just the same thing as social media. Uh, I just reactivated my Facebook account about what? A month I thought and you were going to say MySpace account. No. I was no. going to say you're a little late. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, I, I just made my first GeoCities page. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, so I just, uh, even though I'm in this space, mm -hmm. I just got into it myself and I'm in this industry. So, um, even it's really popular and it, sometimes it takes a while for people to really just get comfortable to expose, you know, right. thoughts and uh, actually I read something online about a couple weeks ago that said someone referenced Twitter as being blog posts that didn't have time to be a full blog. Right. There were just like 140 characters of a potential blog post that they just, you know, maybe they didn't feel like writing or something and they just kind of went with it on Twitter. So, um, well, and I think that's a really good point because a lot of clients say to me now, well, Twitter's, you know, easy. It's 140 characters. Mm -hmm. What thought is that? Um, but I, I actually think, think put, I, yeah. I think it's the opposite. I think it's harder. challenging. It's it's yeah. harder when you have a smaller, shorter format to be succinct, to really get your message across, and to be interesting. If you have you know infinite number of paragraphs in a blog, you can really build presence over time, and it can kind of slowly percolate. But when you've got something that's so fast and so real time, you really have to be interesting in order to to gain any sort of foothold. Was the idea behind 140 characters to match? 
organic search engine rankings that are 170 characters in length? Is I that think the it's idea? more related to texting and SMS and things like that. Right. I mean, I think that, again, it, it's a perfect um, compliment a couple of to sentences, the mobile. Right. It's, yeah. a, it's a perfect compliment to the mobile realm of being able to say something short, succinct. It's like a text message that you would send from one phone to the other, except for you're sending it to everybody. And, and I think that's interesting that, that you being in the industry, you still are just getting back into Facebook. And I think that's typical for our clients in the from the perspective of well do I really have to go do this next thing because you know wasn't it MySpace a couple of years ago why should I do Facebook and that's pretty common um, but I think the point and the overlying thing is and validated by this past week has been that's where your clients are right. so you need to be where they are and again I think also and we've talked about this before at least the three of us have about the fact that there's a problem with Maybe you don't manage every channel as aggressively as you do the ones that are showing you the greatest return based on referring traffic or whatever it is, but you still have to have some sort of presence because honoring channel preference, who's where, and being sure that you're in front of their face, as well as what just happened with Facebook and making sure that you can get your branding and get your own URL and make sure that you've sort of squatted on the property that's rightfully yours. I mean, it's as simple as going back to domains were. 10 years ago and making sure you had every variation of your name. Right? And, and, and that's a great point because there's a, a video that's going, made our way through our offices this week about Tom Brokaw talking about something called right. the internet. Mm -hmm. It's on something called the internet and you know social media was probably there a couple of years ago and this right. is again further validation that social media is, is where everybody needs to pay attention to these days. And that, that reminds me. Video from 1994. That's right, right. 1994. 1994. I remember where I was in 1994. That reminds me, have you heard of Google Analytics? <laughs> we were trying to get the word out. So, uh, anyways, thank you very much for joining us this week. Maybe we'll be back next week for another edition of our end table discussion.